We're fine. Everything's fine here. Uh, welcome to Creation Cast. I'm Mr. Washburn. That's Daku, and that's Bane down there. And uh, and yeah, we're we. It looks like we're good now. So welcome everybody to the stream. Um, let's uh, let's go around and introduce ourselves uh, formally, I suppose. Uh, Daku, go ahead. I'm Daku, currently right now Final Fantasy XIV streamer, till after the creation. Uh, also a little bit of a YouTuber and TikToker. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Fane. You can find all my socials at itsfane.com. I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, unless I'm, you know, doing something else. And I literally <laughs> stand at the camera and talk about Ashes of Creation for hours. So come on, hang it out. There you go. That's awesome. I'm Mr. Washburn. Um, you're here on my channel, so feel free to drop a follow if you haven't already. Um, I stream, you know, whatever I want, whenever I want, which is not very often at the moment because work is kicking my ass. But, uh, but playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, thanks to Daku, and uh, having, a really, <laughs> having a really good time doing it. Um, so we're, we're uh, pumped to be here and, and uh, you know... Uh, no technical issues, I think, so far. So let's get into it. There's actually a lot to talk about um, uh, this week. We've we did we skip last week? We skipped last week, and yes. and so it was like a whole bunch of stuff happened um, right on cue, um, as as kind of you would expect. And then and then so we're back. Um, I guess. What we should talk about first is the recent testing. So there's been two days uh, of testing since we last spoke. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, two days of testing. It was on Wednesdays. Um, and a lot of uh, rubber banding. <laughs> to, to say the least. Rubber banding. Uh, invisible walls. Invisible walls. Stuff that... The invisible walls was a huge kicker because, like, it literally blocks off a massive area of the game map, and you just can't do any quests there. It's like taunting you. Oh, your quest marker's right on the other side of this invisible wall. Right. Too bad you're not playing it this time. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want to go there, do you? Well, you know, here's what I think about that. That's <laughs> funny. Did uh, did you get to play at all? Either of you guys get to play much? Yes. Uh, yeah. I actually played Cleric this time. Um, I wanted to see what all the hype was of why the class is so overpowered currently. And, uh, yeah, they need to nerf back the crap out of Cleric right now. You just can't die at all. and it, It's a fun class, I'll say that much. Well, it's, fun, it's, fun, when you don't, it's fun when you don't die, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially since I was uh, Captain <laughs> Negative 800... Uh, XP debt last time, but we won't speak of that. Yeah, no, for sure. The XP debt can definitely creep up on you. Yeah, I had a chance to play tank. I had a lot of fun with tank, actually. I see what people are saying. I think that it probably is uh, the most fun class as of right now. It's a very, it's a lot more mobile than I would consider a tank should be or could be. I've played most, most of the time that I've played, I've played tank. Uh, and I found it a lot of fun. I found it pretty interesting i i've i've enjoyed um all of the classes so far i did not play much of the testing um and did experience a lot of like of the rubber banding and stuff like that so i was like i i can't i can't do it today you know in the sense that you know it was one of those days where i just couldn't handle it so i i'd rather i'd rather not um have the pay i didn't have the patience for it but uh um yeah question how did the servers handle the player load what would you what would we say to that then i, I guess oh i would say that when it came to the player load when it was spread out people were actively trying to explore the game world it handled it pretty well but the moment there was roughly 20 to 30 people in an area the rubber banding really started to take hold um the degradation of the servers, as mm -hmm. they explained, uh, was something that they were heavily trying to work on, including the rubber banding. So that kind of played into the part that the player load 
was good when you're spread, but if there was just too many people together, it was very unbearable. You couldn't climb down a mountain more than a couple feet, then go back about 50 feet. What I was finding yeah, funny was was when you when you would rubber band, but you would rubber band like way up in the air. So then you would fall down to the ground and take and take fall damage. Uh, I was at serious risk of dying multiple times due to fall damage from rubber banding, which is pretty funny. It's only 150 damage. <laughs> yeah, those steep mountains can be a little treacherous to go down. Oh, That's been like scary. an ongoing uh, an ongoing problem. Yeah. But I mean, how do you guys feel about this, uh, about where we are right now? It feels like we're going, you know, two steps forward, one step back, but I'm still seeing pretty regular progress. Would you guys agree with that? Um, I would say definitely has improved compared to uh, the load screen, the uh, play button boss that we dealt with at the beginning of this whole <laughs> fiasco. Um, it's definitely better, but I still want to know what the hell the sandal on the ground is all about. Steven, tell us. Sorry, I can't get over it. <laughs> it's funny. I, it still just feels like an alpha to me. I mean. I, I'm actually, to be honest, the more I, I've been thinking about it a little bit because I've ex, I've been in alpha tests before and I've been in beta, a lot of beta tests before, and I, I'm always I, I find myself and maybe it's the nature of the fact that this game was kickstarted and 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 stuff like that, but there's a lot of people involved in this at this stage of game development, like more than I would expect and. And again, to, to even, to be honest, um, if you had told, you know, Mike Morheim and, and whoever, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, that you were going to run a completely open alpha that could be live streamed on your newest MMO, um, they would have laughed you out of the boardroom, right? They would have been like, yeah, we don't do that. Are you kidding? Um, you know, and maybe that's the difference between this and Blizzard. But the point is that, this, this very much feels like an alpha and that people are just getting a really rare taste of what alpha gameplay is like. And so we're, we're here and we're like picking it apart, but it's like, that's just the way it is. You know what I mean? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, this is, this is true alpha and it is true development alpha. And we're getting a lot of, uh, I'm seeing a lot of criticism float out there about it and i think that you just you know you have to understand that this is the part that you don't see and everyone says we want a transparent development process we want the companies to tell us what's going on and and we want to know every couple weeks where they are in the development this is what it looks like y'all this yeah. is just what it is no it is hard working development the bare naked truth of what we wanted they we cried we want transparency you got transparency. Do you like it? Some people are like, eh, don't like it so much. Well, then you didn't want transparency. Then you got the other crowd that's like, thank you. This is exactly what we wanted. Let's make this a great game. Let's bust our asses off to help the developers. And, and, it's, and it's not like this is a single player game either, right? This isn't a no. single player game that they have to deal with. Like, this is an MMO development is the hardest development that there is and and developing a large mmo like this is even harder and um you know that's non-instance at least not in this in the way that a game um i'm losing like a, a game to, to compare it to um but you know what i'm saying is that like that's why there's not a lot of AAA a mmos being made is is that it's it's hard and it's messy so um, question, are the environments visually okay? I actually think it's the best thing about the game in its current state, to be honest. Um, you know, for all, for all the rubber banding and, and whatever, netcode issues and, and the balance of the, you know, the, the, the balance of classes and all of that stuff and the lack of quests, which is all fairly normal alpha stuff, the environment looks freaking amazing in my mind. I think once we get a true feeling of what the game world looks like, instead of it currently being kind of a mosh posh of all different zones, kind of smashed together in an alpha zone, 
we're going to get an even better idea of how beautiful this world truly is. Because right now, it, it's like it's a beautiful world. But yeah. It feels like everything's just too close together in the sense of the style of the zones. You don't get a feel of a lush area because you could literally walk down the road and see a ruins and a smoldering area. It, it, that's if you guys get what I mean by that. Yeah, yeah, no, one hundred percent. I think Michael Bacon is doing such a good job as you know our lead environmental guy. He is the the world feels immersive to me, and, and the biggest thing is, and I've said this before, and I'll I'll probably hark on it for the next year and a half, is we when you move from one zone to the next, it does not feel like okay, I'm done with the snow zone, now I'm in the fire zone, I'm done with the fire, now I'm in the forest. It, it's a, a feeling of a seamless transition, almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can agree with that. And uh, Trusha said, uh, does the world feel big? Do you get the sense that there are zones within the world that you feel locked in? I would say when I get into an area and I start kind of questing there, killing the mobs, I kind of feel like I'm locked into an area for the time being because I feel like if I leave it, it's the completionist of quest in me that I want to get everything in a zone or an area done before I move on. So to answer your question, yes, I feel locked in. It doesn't feel like it's trying to make me travel to another zone and try to work on two zones at the same time. If they did that, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. I was looking I, at a, take... a world, like your world map right there, right behind you, Fane. It, the the alpha is only a very small piece of that whole world map, like a very very small, right? Yeah, I mean the alpha is really representing uh, twelve. I think they've said twelve to fifteen percent at the most of the entire world, and no area is going to actually look like this. Kind of the alpha starter island will be gone from this peninsula. That being said, I'm going to take kind of the opposite side that Daku's taken i actually don't really feel kind of stuck in one zone unless i'm just sitting in an area doing you know grinding some mobs in one area i oftentimes if i'm actually like okay i'll kill these monsters then i'll go to these ones then i'll go to these ones all of a sudden i find out that i'm halfway across the map and i didn't even intend to be and i really like that feeling where the game kind of naturally creates exploration that being said obviously uh, monster density and things like that are are definitely not fleshed out yet. No, yeah, but that's okay. Still a lot, to, uh, a lot of world <laughs> left. Well, don't forget, there's some monsters that are actually inside the rock and they're pecking your face and you can't even touch them. But hey, that is part of an alpha. <laughs> <laughs> or as I learned this weekend, don't drink the mysterious fluid in an old bottle. It's gonna kill you. Yeah. Kids, don't drink the mysterious fluid. Hot tips. Yeah. Hot, hot tips. Um, what did you think? So we realized um, before we went live that none of us participated in the the siege event. But did, did we all... I watched the video after because I knew we were going to talk about it. So I, I made sure to watch at least some of it um do you guys have a chance to to check it out after after the fact and what do you think yeah i mean 100 percent. i'm really impressed uh a few tests ago i got a chance to go in and actually you know get around inside the siege castle i haven't actually had the actual siege experience i think it's pretty well fleshed out i'm really excited to see how far they've come with that um it feels impactful it feels big i know there's some complaints about the loading and even doing right now 50 versus 50 obviously this is an early iteration but the 50 versus 50 people said you know character models were loading in uh, at a pretty short range you weren't seeing them far away but other than that you know i'm really excited for this uh, next test this upcoming week to get in there and try it out yeah to piggyback on the last thing he said about the loading um i saw some of the footage where someone sitting up on a kind of archery equipment on the wall and literally till they were almost up to the wall you couldn't even really see them which that will be fixed and that's fine 
another thing that someone brought up is the idea of seeing people's nameplates. There's no real way to create like a true flanking uh, maneuver or anything like that because people can just see your nameplates behind the bushes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel with the siege, they need to maybe disable nameplates, but still able to allow you to attack. Like, you don't need names to really uh, enjoy a siege combat. That that's kind of what I took away from it. That and uh, Stephen had an epic an epic monologue at the beginning. He put to shame some other really well uh, monologues from other content creators I could think of. Interesting. The the nameplate thing is interesting. Like, I mean, it's one of those things, right? Because that's like a core system feature is like having your name over your head. Um, you know, in an MMO is pretty standard practice. Um, so having it turned off automatically when a siege starts or something, I don't, I don't know if that's like complexity well, it... you'd want to mess with. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the solution is, uh, right, so... or if there needs to be a solution at all. But it's that's an interesting thought. Like my my idea of it is, if you click on a person, their nameplate would show up. But if, like, you're out in the field and you're trying to rally your group to do, go flank to the left side of the castle, yeah. but everyone up on the wall can see can that see, whole flanking move, yeah. group. Uh, see, oh, I see all their nameplates. They're trying <laughs> to flank us over there. That's what I mean. Like, you can't really have any real strategy behind a siege battle if... You can see all these nameplates all over the place. It's it pretty funny. Not only only causes a cluttering effect that can knock down some of your performance on any person's PC, but if you were able to maybe hide it, except when you directly target a person, then it shows. That would be an interesting kind of concept. Hmm. Just I mean, my the other side on that. The other side of that. How do you guys feel about at least a nameplate with? A guild tag because isn't that going to be an important part of this is we know that oh. this node declared war but we'd like to know what guilds were in there which guilds are trying to tear us down also yeah, like if, if they if they leave the if they leave the area like if they come and meet you on the field for example how how would you know the difference between you and like if the names aren't above their heads you're not going to be able to know who you're fighting against unless there's like a I don't know, to use a WoW term, a tabard or something like that that you wear. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to you gotta know who you're fighting against. It's got to be indicated in some way. It's, it's just one of the small things that you got to figure out when you're doing an MMO, especially one that has siege PvP. How does, like, I mean, WoW has battlegrounds. Yep. Right? And th those battlegrounds don't have necessarily sieges. A Guild Wars 2 does, though, have sieges, does it not? Does it not have it, PvP? Oh, yes, it does, because World v. World v. World is the closest thing you have to a siege, because um, you can set up trebuchets, you can do battering rams, um, you can do um, crossbow equipment. There's a lot of different things when it comes to sieging in that game. Um, name tags are definitely on, but the world... so. This is the difference between After the Creations and Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2, the siege world is massive. And I mean massive. If you're sieging the main castle in the middle of the world, there's five, six, seven maybe possible points that you could enter that castle. And having your name mm -hmm. above your head will not matter because of how big it is. You need to actually coordinate in either voice chat or through the global chat for people to actually know, hey, Group A is starting from the top, uh, northwestern side. Everyone head over there and defend this. Whereas currently, Ashes of Creation, it's kind of going from south to north type scenario. There's... Is, anyone in chat? Was anyone in chat actually in the siege battle? Was it multifaceted in the size of the castle? Or was it literally you just had the front of the castle and you had to get through it? Yeah, I, I, couldn't, well, and, I couldn't tell from watching it. Yeah, uh, here's another thought that, that it's kind of popping in my head as we talk about nameplates. But 
I now I'm kind of pro nameplates. I've switched my entire opinion here in the last 45 seconds because I think that the nameplates, because castle sieges and sieges in general are objective based, it's not just an attrition fight to see who can last the longest. I think having nameplates will make classes that have an invisibility mechanic, i.e. rogues and potentially rangers, potentially your your secondary archetype, I think yeah. that will make those more impactful because you will lose the nameplate. So if you send people over to the east side of the castle, now you're sending 25 rogues towards the west with an objective. I think them losing nameplates and your the defending group tracking these attackers could make for some really interesting strategies. That's kind of what I was getting at. Thank you for clarifying that. That's awesome. <laughs> interesting. And someone in the chat had also talked about whether um, whether they thought it was a cool idea to do PVE during um, during like something like a siege. And it reminded me of um, I also to bring up WoW, but in, in WoW Battlegrounds there are. Um, small amounts of PVE uh, within within the battlegrounds. I can't remember which ones. Alterac Valley. Yeah, Alterac specifically, Valley. there are PVE elements, and I'm a I'm not much of a PVPer to be honest. I like group PVP, so like sieges and stuff like that. I'd probably be into. I just don't like like duels and like one on one stuff. Um, so I wouldn't be adverse to PVE kind of support type questing inside of a siege to build up re like i mean if you listen to any sort of like history show or podcast or whatever they talk a lot about you know the good ones we'll talk about like the the rear guard the rear lines of battles being super important because that's how the supplies are the supply chain is maintained and stuff like your that. Your supply line is everything sure, if so. your supply line dies then your whole battle dies I have attrition Oh, where was it? Um, there were three gates on the outside, then a middle center gate, and then the final throne gate. The attackers on the first te uh, test went down the middle, but in the live stream, video went for the right gate. Okay, so in a sense, there was a little bit of depth to the castle. Hopefully, um, in the live version, whenever we eventually get to that, they may expand it to be multiple sides. Because the idea of just having a frontal assault and not being able to really run around the back of the castle, it'll feel very two-dimensional to me. I don't know about you guys. I mean, I think this is an early iteration. I think that there probably will be more of those kind of aforementioned objectives. Yeah. Having the PVE in there, uh, it's probably going to depend on how impactful that PVE stuff is. I know that a few people have mentioned it reminds them of League of Legends, where you have one person who their entire job is just the PVE objective for buffs. Something like that could have a place. Uh, I'm still not sure how I like all of it. But I think you're going to see multifaceted entry points and multifaceted uh, strategies. Mm. Uh, question now, in the chat: How do you feel about player collision? There's, there's not many MMOs that actually have player collision. Um, and I, I, I'm trying to actually think of one. Um, there really isn't. Most MMOs, you can go through the person's body, even if there's a little bit of resistance. Meaning, when you go to hit the per person's body. It'll take a second it before it'll you down wow, a little, you go yeah, through. Yeah, yeah the, that's their version of collision. Yeah. Um, I feel collision in this actually brings death to the game world in the sense that it makes it real and you're not just a uh, spectral ghost that <laughs> someone can run through. Because the whole idea of a spectral ghost and running through a person's body to get to point A to point B it takes away a little bit of the realism. If we're trying to go for a true fantasy, you should not be able to go through a person's body. <laughs> I think it well, would be. Well, on a base level, it's an anti-Zerk mechanic, no? Uh, yeah, it is. You are right. It's that It kind of creates uh, the um, 
what is the the Spartans, the five hundred Spartans, where um, yeah, Hell's Gate and stuff like that, that the um, Persians had to go through that little narrow gap. Same scenario, no yeah. Zerg mechanic. You, you want to get to us? <laughs> You're all gonna die along the way. <laughs> interesting. I I would I would find it interesting if they like. It would be as as someone who's played a lot of MMOs over the last. 20 years i would be fascinated to learn more about um you know a mechanic um where collision or a situation where collision had a dramatic impact on like things like pvp i that would be a fascinating case study to, to learn about um it, it, like where where it actually made a difference it'd be amazing to to hear about especially if they could strategize the way uh, it would also say a lot about your player base that you had a lot of people enough to make enough to make bodies be the thing that is is stopping people from going places um yeah that that'd say something about the size of the group that was sieging that's for sure be interesting now this is the only thing i missed in the thing but uh was there xp debt during the siege battle oh i don't know I don't That's remember. a good question because if there's see, it, it kind of turns into a <laughs> what should we call it? it? It turns into a do you really want to risk it going into a siege battle if there's going to be XP debt? Because that could be deadly to a person. If you're that person that runs in Leroy Jenkins style and constantly dies, you're going to be spending the next year of your life trying to get out of that XP debt. There probably uh, is a hard uh, cap, but uh, you get the point. Still not a fan yeah, of I mean, XP debt. I, I don't think I want to see XP debt necessarily in structured PvP. It might be there now, but I think that'll probably be fixed. Things like arena PvP and large-scale sieges where there's a lot of respawning and a lot of reattacking. I'm not 100% sure. Now, here's an idea. How do you guys feel if there was a instance castle siege where there was no respawning you died you're out hardcore oh. mode i'd be i'd be for that um but they need to fix the current combat system to make it good because currently the way the combat system is which it is being reworked everyone those that don't know the current combat system is not the final um they need to fix it more to make the dodge roll better for for uh defending yourself um give classes more abilities to escape combat that's going to kick our butts because right now the way it is if there was a hardcore mode i can guarantee one side would be out in under five minutes and i could see that unless there was you know there'd have to be some really big balance changes for sure the the yeah. risk the risk reward of permanent like exile from the siege if you died would be really high like you'd it, it it would be maybe too much for people to think it worth it to even initiate a siege if if they thought you know we could have a bad bad luck bad flank you know you know nameplates and all um and and get you know stomped and then and then you lose your whatever it is that you lose because of it because you had a bad night right um yeah. that would that would suck like you'd be pretty <laughs> you'd be pretty <laughs> you'd be pretty you'd be pretty pissed if it, it you know especially if it's like depending on how the combat works and how tight the groups are if like it's like one person the newbie the noob in your siege defense you know screws up right and then they die and that like everything falls apart after that right it's a domino effect to continue <laughs> your 300 reference they talk about the the shield protecting the person beside them and stuff like that right 500 reference no the, the movie's <laughs> called 300 is it 300 okay it's maybe 300. i'm a dummy D uh, Daku, Daku's Doc is trying to pad the Spartans a little bit, make sure that they had enough, you know, just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we needed, needed a little extra help. They only needed <laughs> three hundred. 
So, um, you know, one person falls and then the whole thing falls apart. And, you know, the noob is to blame for for losing everything because of permanent death kind of thing. It'd be, uh, you know, there's a lot of complexity to all of these questions that I'm not sure people appreciate when it comes to building a, a fully fledged MMO, that's for sure. Yeah, well, every... Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, 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 please, please, Doc. Uh, I was going to say, every system that he is building for this game is one chain in the link. And if any of them possibly fail, he's going to have to rebuild everything all over again. Like, he's playing a very delicate system with everything he's doing in this game. And if it works out, it's going to be one hell of an MMO. Um, and that's all I hope for. <laughs> Uh, it's he just has to fine tune and strengthen all those different scenarios to make everything work, but nothing will be perfect. Someone will have a complaint about one of the systems, and others will like it. So we all just have to kind of come to terms with that. Speaking now, Washburn, you said something that kind of triggered something in my mind. Uh, you said, you know, one person falls and the whole thing falls apart. And, and I'll tell you guys this, I was not in testing last week. I was out uh, on vacation. I missed the live stream. I missed it all. And I came back to the news of one man falling. <laughs> Jeffrey Bard is no longer with the studio. And I'm, I'm a little bit hurt, honestly. I am too. Honestly, he's a great, great man. Oh, wow. Well, solid segue, by the way. Solid segue. First, yes, it was. First, <laughs> solid. First rule, first rule of streaming: don't talk about the segues, I guess. But you know, whatever. We break um, the fourth wall burn. here. You know, we break the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> We're real, Rolling everybody. Segue. Uh, it was pro AF. Give this man a race. He doesn't get paid for this. Um, at all. I if this think. if this stream gets if this gets big enough, you never know, guys. You never know, guys. If you don't get paid, you don't have to pay taxes. So that's great. <laughs> that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Um. Uh, you know, first, so what were your first thoughts? You come home and you hear about Jeff, uh, Fane, what, what did you think? I mean, I mean, it was definitely a, uh, a shock to me. I, somebody had put it in discord and I thought that they were trolling. I thought that they, I, I was on the plane watching the, the live stream on my phone. I was a little bit shocked. I mean, Jeff has been with the project <sighs> since inception. Hmm. And, yep. you know, having someone in that position where they're really driving the boat, kind of, I was a little, I, I mean, I, I'm still, I'm still even to this moment talking about it, a little bit shocked. It, what are you guys, because I know you guys are both a little bit newer to Ashes of Creation. How did you all view Jeff's role and how impactful do you guys think that this is going to end up being? Well, my opinion of it is he was very passionate about something else and that was vr um so his leaving the studio to go towards his passion i felt was good on him the only downside to it was ashes of creation hasn't come out of alf uh vi i'm sorry visual nda yet and to the outside sources those that don't actually aren't part of the alpha testing they might see that as ashes of creation is in trouble it's losing its lead game designer not necessarily trouble it just means that he felt he did what he needed for the company and he now wanted to go explore what he's passionate about so i took it as kind of a positive thing there will be fresh blood that will come in and help to steer the ship and keep it on keep it going so i'm not really mad at him for his choice i wish him best of luck and thank him for what he did i had um i had a couple thoughts my my first initial my initial reaction um it it, it actually brought up a, a funny thought for me and that's that um i thought of civil the game civilization um so civilization five six whatever my favorite part of playing Civilization is the early game. I love playing the initial 150 turns of Civilization. 
and then you know in the late game it gets boring to me it's i'm i'm less interested in the part where you know i curb stomp people and and just win and and the the you know the ending i i'm super interested in the early parts of playing that game and and the reality is is that the the life cycle of a game as it's being built and developed goes through a bunch of different stages uh, a, a bunch of different phases of its life and there are frankly just people suited to those stages and enjoy for example um you know the early stages of developing a game maybe more than you know um i'll tell you like for example when this game launches when like 1.0 comes out it's a whole different world than developing a game you know it's a it's the the maintenance mode of an mmo is a completely different company you 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 have to have customer service now instead of you know um con you, you don't need an army of concept designers you need a an army of customer service representatives to answer phone calls and emails and live chats right like it's a totally different it's it's a completely different business model even and so well yeah. well he didn't suggest this um just from experience i know that there are people that enjoy and are passionate about things at different stages in a company's life and maybe jeff you know obviously if he's left he's less passionate about you know what he was doing than what he's going to do which means at some point you know he was into it right um uh, and it's just and you know the other part as as someone who helps run um not a i mean not a super large company but a large enough company and i'm an executive at that company people leave all the time i mean and we're doing yep. like at, at the place that i work we're doing incredibly awesome passionate hard world changing type work and people still leave um for other things and you don't take offense to it you don't you know it is what it is people move on we we just had someone leave the other day um and she was amazing and then she just wanted to go and do this other amazing thing it wasn't bad it was just she just wanted to change and that's the way it is and and so you know, I think my first thought, you know, was just that, or my first thought was that, you know, the life cycle of a company changes and they're getting really close to being in this different phase. Like, I think this alpha beta phase is like the middle phase of like these three phases of the way that an MMO is developed. And, you know, maybe Jeff was just into the first phase and not the, not the alpha beta iteration type phase that they're in now and then the idea that just you know people leave and go do other things and it's just kind of the way that the world works and it doesn't always say bad things about you or your company it's just nope. the way it's just the way it is definitely it's definitely i mean leaving yeah he's leaving on a high yeah I, I think he left it in a good place uh I think that everyone I've talked to has admitted, you know, Jeff Bard is going to be missed. He was a great personality and uh, definitely did some really good work on the vision. Now, here's kind of the follow-up question. I want to get this on the record, right? I'm doing this as we're doing this live because I want witnesses. Do you think that they're going to promote someone from within? Or do you think that they're going to hire someone from the outside? And if they're promoting someone from within, who do you think is moving into that position? Uh... I don't know guess, enough about the people to know. I don't know enough about the people on the inside, but if I were to guess, I would say Steven's going to choose someone inside first. And if no one takes the bite, he'll hire outside. But um, he's still trying to get up to magical 150 uh, staff to really get the game kicking in high gear. So possibly he might find someone within those 150 people to make the new game designer. But the problem when it comes to getting a new game designer, you're going to have creative differences compared to the previous iteration, which 
has to mesh well with the company's vision. So as long as whoever they choose from outside the company is willing to abide by the company's rules to make the vision they're looking at, they'll choose outside. But if it's someone within inside, they already know the vision and they're going to work towards that vision, if that makes sense. That would be kind of like the criteria of choosing inside compared to outside. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I I was talking to some people about this earlier this week, and um, and I'll say, and I want to throw these out there so that you guys can all say, oh, look, Fane's wrong. <laughs> and if you are watching this live and Fane is wrong, when we finally get IntrepidCon, I owe you a beer if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm thinking Mark Storch, who's the lead architect? Or obviously McPherson, who's our lead programmer. I think those two guys have been with the company long enough that I think they understand the vision and the direction of the game. And I think either would be super capable of moving up into that position. Not that there's not a lot, a ton of capable people at Intrepid. I think that just those positions will probably move into lead game design uh, the smoothest. What was Jeff's title? Lead game. De Jeff was lead game designer. Uh, Mark is the lead architect, and Kevin McPherson's the lead programmer. Mm. Having new eyes isn't the worst thing in the world, especially if there's someone who's experienced with shipping things, you know, because they're in a, they've got it, they've got to ship it, right? And so that means, you know, that, you know, someone who's experienced with the, um, you know, I was experienced with the, the iteration cycle of alpha and betas in MMOs um, would be super valuable to have. I don't know if that's internal or not, um, but but someone who is familiar with that iterative process of, of you know, that because it's again, it's a whole other life cycle of the game being developed right now. Um, you know, architecture is pretty, you know, not as much like a game design thing you know, server side stuff and net code probably. Um and programming yeah, programmers. I didn't say that. Well right now that's the biggest thing they're working <laughs> on. because uh, as it is for the next test, they're working again towards the rubber banding and stuff like that. And those are gonna kinda be big concepts that they want to make sure they get going. Yeah. It'd be a get if they could get someone from a current kind of a recent current MMO that has experience with that kind of that alpha beta iterative process. Be tough I'm going to gonna do, joke uh... about this. I'm going to joke about this and don't take offense, but uh, I'm going to say Yoshi P. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> actually, you know, you pay him like uh, what I mean, whatever he would need, uh, which would be a lot of money. I'm sure he's making because he basically hey. saved 14. So. He, uh, yeah, he, he brought back the game from 1.0 to 2.0 and secretly developed 2.0 while keeping the 1.0 going. For those that never watched the uh, documentary, that was a really good documentary they did. It was like a four-part series on YouTube. But uh, yeah, if they had to find someone that can save an MMO or help steer an alpha into a beta, that's the best of the best. He made six. He's making sixteen too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he's a uh, part of uh, Square Enix Division Three, or is it Division Six? I forget. Interesting. So I, I followed his history. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, people, I didn't get worked up about it. It's not worth getting. It's totally not worth getting worked up about. You know this. You know if people are getting worked up about it, it's like gamers doing gamer worked up about things, you know, and not uh, rea based in reality, which is that people leave companies every day, not because of the company, but because their their interests are in other places. Pretty normal stuff. Definitely, oh. but we wish uh, we wish Jeff the best wherever he's going. Uh, he's really an amazing person in the gaming community and uh, we'll definitely be following his progress. Yeah, totally. Thank you, Jeff, for everything you did for us, my friend. We appreciate you. So we're going to leave We're gonna leave uh, uh, the last uh, bit here. We're going to talk about some of this new cosmetic stuff. Um, Daku, you've got it up on your screen. So we're going yep. to take a look at 
what is uh, what's new and exciting in the world of uh, the the Alpha cosmetics? Talk us through this. All right. Well, first off, this isn't the new stuff. The new stuff will be going live beginning of next or this month, actually. So in a couple days, look forward to. But right now, this is what you can possibly get for still getting to the alpha testing as of right now. The lovely five hundred dollar price tag. <laughs> Got to respect those that came before us, after all. Um, pretty much. Let's let's look down it. So you're gonna get access to the alphas one through the betas. Eleven months game time. One hundred fifty ember. Um, all those cosmetic loveliness and the name reservation, which God, someone don't take Daku, please don't take Daku. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's look individually at these pieces. So we got the lovely shoulders. They look like uh, pretty much. What do you guys call that? Like, like a, a sea shell sea clam? Shell? Yeah. Yeah. That the boat, I love it. It's kind of got kind of um. Almost like a seahorse vibe. To actually, that does look like a seahorse with the tail and everything. Um, kind of reminds me of like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean type ship. Uh, and all the rest of these pieces, they look absolutely wonderful. The mount, I'm really curious how that's going to look. Um, riding around on that thing. <laughs> um, but these will all be disappearing soon. They haven't announced it yet in the Discord, but. If you are still looking to get into the alpha to join us and get a feeling as to what we're all experiencing, take a shot. Just go for it. <laughs> for you, the you low, low it. price of $500. <laughs> but hey, it, as Steven has said multiple times, guys, this is a true alpha. If you're expecting to come play a game, don't buy it. If you're coming expecting to test a game, spend the $500 if you so please. So just keep that in mind. There, we've explained it. There is rubber banding. There is invisible walls stopping us from going to places. There's ships that have been flung by Lieutenant Toast at characters, causing them being flung across the map, which that was hilarious. And we played beach volleyball with the ship. So you still get to have a lot of fun. But um, there will be new cosmetics coming up, and we won't be talking about that the next episode, but the episode after that. Nice. Um, next episode, we'll be talking about uh, artwork within the community, and I will be finding another three artists that I will be showcasing here on Cre Creation Cast. If you are someone that is passionate about making artwork for Ashes of Creation, Post it on the official forums. You never know. I might pick it and showcase it on the stream for everyone. There you go. Yes. If you have art, if you draw art, if you do any Ashes art, send it Daku's way and, and he'll he'll mention it. Um, I think that that's it. I think we've, we've covered everything. We got some play testing coming up to check out, um, which is exciting. Some more to talk about. Um, uh, but in the meantime, let's, uh, let's go around again and tell people where they can connect, um, with us and, and, and watch us stream when we're, when we're live. You go first, Fane. All right, guys, you know where to find me. It's Fane.com, Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, all of the things go over there, click that follow button. It's free. Come hang out. Sometimes we do uh, Ashes of Creation. Sometimes we watch random YouTube videos and learn what the best kind of bacon is. You never know. And my name's Doc Muller. You can find me on Twitch. You can find me on YouTube. Um, trying to become a Twitter master, but I'll fail at that for the rest of my life. If you ever want to learn how to make 13-minute scrambled eggs, come to my stream. I'll teach you something. There you go. And I'm Mr. Washburn everywhere, and I am a Twitter master. Um, so feel free to to check me out on on Twitter, um, uh, and and follow if you're you're one of the 15 people watching right now who is not following uh, this channel. Feel free to do that. It would be absolutely um, fabulous of you uh, to come and hang out the next time I'm playing something whatever that something is probably final fantasy lately um and and doing that 
We are, um, he was in the chat earlier and I actually was so, um, I, I was heads up about it. And I even, I even sent him a message on discord saying, listen, if you go live in the next five minutes, we'll raid you. And he went live. So we're going to raid him. Um, literally two seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. I, I was waiting for it. Cause I'm like, dude, I gave you the heads up. So we're going to go over and send everyone over to Bartik who is live now his starting screen is up and you can go say hi to Bardic. drop a follow on him if you're not following him once you get there and uh thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next week see you next time no, guys uh two weeks from now remember are we doing a weekly two weeks from now we don't know two weeks two from weeks. now we'll let you know two weeks from now guys we do it when we do it guys we're gonna yeah, do it and you'll, you'll be here you'll watch <laughs> it when we tell you thank you all right Love everybody you all, guys take Peace. care bye bye Later, guys i should uh i should have done the i should have started the raid earlier is what i should have done but i'm gonna go and press the raid now button right now okay see you later bye Bye, boys. <laughs> God. All right.